Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. Today I'm going to be harvesting and feeding the spin and then I'm going to take you outside to the new raised bin I built yesterday and show you how I use my worm castings to add soil fertility to my garden. And this is what is going to get planted in about a month in that raised bed. All right, let me put you up and we will start harvesting and taking care of my 55 gallon worm bin blue. Okay, rather than having you watch me do all of my sifting, I'm just gonna pull off the dry stuff here and put it in a bucket for later. But this will show you about how much that I get every time. This is a three gallon bucket. And I imagine I will come close to filling this up. Now, as far as what I'm gonna get a return, I'll probably get about 75% of this bucket. The rest of it will have to go back in the feeding end because it's not completely finished yet. But as we are pushing towards spring, and it is a very short time that I will be planting my onions and leeks, um, I am gonna need more, which means I need more room to push the stuff that's mostly finished to this end. So here we go. We've almost got a three gallon bucket of siftable castings. I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side so that we can start moving the wedge along. So what I'm gonna do here, this here is very dry. Some people did comment last time on how dry it is. It is dry by design at this end of the bin. This part is mostly done except for super long-term food. It is, you know, purposefully dry so that the worms will leave and go to the part where there is uh, good moisture and food. Kind of like a continuous flow through bin, only working in the horizontal. So I'm gonna slowly kinda get that dry stuff down to the end. That slowly get this dry stuff down to the end where it can get worked through again. And then I'll continue moving the dryish stuff down here. I also had some people ask for an update on the colored paper. And what I'm seeing here right now is probably not colored paper, but tape that came off of packaging. And when I see it, I pick it out. I don't generally see anything left over from paper. Most of the time, all of that is gone. The only kind of paper that I am sure is a bad idea is the kind that goes or comes from frozen products. So anything like that generally has some kind of a lamination in the paper. And it's likely that that is not going to degrade 100%. If you put it in the bin, you'll probably end up picking out the laminations. So if you want to do that, you can put it in the bin and the worms will eat around it. And that won't hurt them. It'll just mean that there's going to be a little bit of uh, laminate in your bin for a while until you can pick it out or harvest it out. The little packing sheets that I've been using to keep the bin nice and damp is working great. You can tell that's a ideal moisture for the worms here. Some people, I mean, if you're a, a purposely trying to breed more worms, you might want to make it wetter than this. This is how wet my bin is. And for me, this is what I want to do. If I was actually trying to get the worms to breed and increase the population quickly, I would have it much wetter than this. So, you know, put your goals below. What are you trying to do with your worm bin? Are you just trying to get them to eat your scraps or are you doing a business? I know some of you are doing a business, but um, yeah. Since I am not, I'm just making castings for my own use. I try to keep my bin at a moisture that is good for me and will uh, cycle quickly, but then also be easy to harvest. Um, I think I have enough, enough worms for, my, for the most part. So they're doing a good job. You can still see chunks of food in here. 
You can still see little scraps of paper, seeds, cork. All right, we're getting to the middle here and it is getting more and more damp as we go. And that, that will leave us quite a bit of room to feed, which I am gonna be happy with. So I've got, I've probably had about 100 gallons of castings that I've harvested already. But I do have a pretty good size food garden as well as ornamental garden. So it is getting, they've got about two or three months to really kick into gear and uh, make me some more castings. I finally patched that hole. You know, don't rush me. It's only been like four years. Might put that in some water and rescue the castings that were in that plastic bag. This was an old rain barrel, which is why there was a hole in there to begin with. During the whole bird flu, due to the bird flu about, I don't know if it was 10 years ago or so, uh, my local area said that uh, we were no longer allowed to harvest rainwater. Not sure if that's still the case. I'll have to check, but I took some of my rain barrels and made them into worm bins. I figured why well, just have a bunch of PVC barrels laying about, get them to use somewhere. So that's what blue used to be, and that's why he's got holes in random places. All right, so we're still seeing some of the wheat berries here. Let's see if I can find one. This thing here at the end of my finger is, is a wheat berry. So I think this is going on three or four months with the wheat berries if you don't crush them up or put them in a blender. So in the event that you have wheat berries to feed your worms, you may want to put them through the blender or the coffee grinder, or otherwise it's gonna take a good long time for them to get to it. All right, let me move you down to the feeding end of the bin. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna keep moving that dry stuff over. Maybe we'll get a worm ball, I don't know. We didn't see a whole bunch of worms at this end, so it is likely but I didn't give them a huge new feeding last time. So that kind of reduces our chances of getting a pretty, you know, very concentrated worm ball. Still seeing quite a bit of the wheat berries. <clears throat> Not seeing the other food though. Not so far. But this is, because I'm pushing this bin to go a little bit faster, I am getting to have quite a bit in the way of bedding this close to the middle. Um, I did want to say that in the event that you only have a pound or two of worms, you cannot do this. You cannot push your worms to do more. The food will just rot in the bin and your worms will die. So when you have a small bin or just a small amount of worms, or even if it's a big bin, but it's new, you need to be very careful and only feed when you observe that the worms have finished the food and not before. So I have a few straggler bits of food with the wheat berries, but that is just a very small amount. If I was to see large chunks of apples or things like that, and it was most of the feeding, then I would not feed or I would feed super lightly. Uh, again, with that paper, this is gonna take me quite a while to get that. This is why people complain about office paper. It just, it does this. And, oh, here's the tea. Wow, look at all those mites. The mites like tea. I don't see anything else, be oh no, there's the springtails. So springtails and worms and mites, oh my. I'm kind of surprised the worms are in there already, but the moisture must have been enough to uh, dissolve just a little bit of it to get them in there. So lots of paper. We put about uh, six or eight gallons of bedding in here last time. So 
it is to be expected that there is oop, kind of a worm ball and I messed it up. Sorry guys. Such good worms and I always mess in with you. It's for the greater good, guys. Okay. Keep digging around here. Uh-oh. I don't think I meant whatever this is. It looks like it's in a bag. Okay, I will investigate that later. Oop, another another worm ball here. See now how this looks like plastic? This is not plastic. This is actually a tomato skin that has been, had all of the meat eaten off of it. You'll see things like this for peppers as well. It's pretty interesting. Some tomatoes have a yellow skin and some have a clear skin. And the ones that have the clear skin uh, look transparent like plastic when uh, the worms eat them all the way down to the nubs. Okay, down to the last little bit here. Might have a good worm ball. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. You can see all the different kinds of worms in there. You've got the red wigglers and the European night crawlers. And... I don't see a blue worm right now, but that doesn't mean it's not in there. Even more worms. And this smells just like a forest floor. It's pretty warm in here. We've had some nice warm weather. Okay, here is a blue worm. I'm gonna put it down and you'll see how fast it goes. It looks exactly like a red wiggler, except for the clitellum is flush with its body. Similar to what it would be when it was an immature worm. But that's how it is for their entire life. And that's generally how you tell them apart from red wigglers. Is that they are adult worm size, but still kind of skinny. And then they're just moving very, very quickly. And uh, for anybody who thinks, oh, I'm just going to separate it out and get rid of them. I don't think you can. Um, you would just spend a lot of time doing it and end up with blue worms as soon as the cocoons hatched again and you would have wasted all that time. If you have them, you have them and that is just the way it is. Here in the Midwest, they won't live outside to my knowledge, at least in zone 5 where I live. So they're not going to run amok and become invasive because they will, they will die. But I have red wigglers here in in my garden that live here year round. So that's an avocado pit after it has started to degrade. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, so there we go. We have made, we've made our spot here that we can give them new food. All right, so let's get some bedding for a good base layer. And you will actually see this worm and its cocoon came from my bedding stash because I put castings in there so that the microbiology can get started ahead. And sometimes I will get worms that live in my bedding container. As you can tell how wet this is. Ideal conditions for them to hatch and breed. All right, let's get them some food. Actually, let's get the uh, part that I sifted first. So over the last couple of weeks, I have been continuing to harvest this bin, and then I put all of the, uh, the hard bits that didn't go through the screen into some water and let it soak so that hopefully that can get softened up and they can eat it this time. All right, so it looks like we have some pizza, some onions, bananas, and uh, more lentil soup over here. Let's get some bedding to cover that up because that does not smell nice. All right, there we go. Then I'm just gonna put this on top, keep that all nice and damp for them. 
and let's go outside and I'll show you what I do with my casting. All right, here we are outside, and in case you're wondering, yeah, that is frost. Uh, so this is not me planting anything, this is me preparing the bed. So I did get a really good deal on some bagged um, soil, has a lot of organic nutrients in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna help out those organic nutrients and I'm gonna give them some worm castings. All right, so I'm gonna spread those out and kind of work them in. <clears throat> that way all of those microbes can work with all of the organic fertilizer that's in this potting soil mix. And then I'm gonna add some of my own. All right, what I have here is azomite, which is named azomite because it gives you all of your minerals A to Z. I'm probably gonna put about six or 10 handfuls in here. This is not readily available right now which is why I'm adding it so that before any of the season so that all of the microbes can start breaking this down <clears throat> so that my plants can have all of their micronutrients. Okay. That was probably the equal to about two pints. Now I have some green sand and because this is a brand new bed I know it doesn't have a lot in the way of nitrogen or magnesium. So what I'm doing is adding more of that to the mix, which does have some kelp meal in it, but probably not enough for onions, which are gonna live in this bed here pretty soon. Now, it looks super full. But as soon as I get one of our torrential spring rains, it's absolutely gonna probably settle down to about four inches below. And then on top of that, I'm gonna add some straw. This is just the kind that you buy. I can't, I don't really feel comfortable trusting the baled hay that comes locally because of all the graze on, which could kill my seedlings. So I'm just going to put a really thick layer of this on top so that A, it keeps the moisture for all of my microbes, and then also, it also doesn't allow the microbes to get hit with the solar radiation, killing them. Like, you know, don't nuke the microbes, right? All right, well, if you liked this video, go ahead and give that a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, please click that sub sub subscribe button hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon, all right? You can see a playlist right over here for the 55 gallon bin. And then over here is what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.